Where do the retail companies like CVS and Walmart and uh, Walgreens fit? Well, from a source of data, they are, um, they don't have, they, I mean, they're, if they have a provider posture, then they're following the provider path. They might also have information about you that come from uh, your buying behaviors, which are interesting and useful, but, and they have their own rubric. They don't necessarily have the same rubric as, as patient data does. And that's a matter of public policy as to whether or not we want to consider your retail information to be something that's as protected as your clinical information. But to some extent they have, they're, so, they're a source of data. They're also potentially a user of the data uh, if they want to build products and services. And uh, just like any other user of data, they're going to have to honor that. So which is one of the reasons why if you look at um, retailers who have had clinics, they have been unable from a policy perspective to merge front of store retail behavior and the pharmacy and the clinical PHI data together as a matter of policy. Sure, they have record systems and they contain them, but they don't have a policy right to integrate that information without going through the right kinds of consents. So, you know, I mean, I think they've, they're just like everybody else and that they have to figure out how to create a value proposition. I think the other thing that's really important, and we're seeing this increasingly, going back to this issue of consent, is that people want to understand how the information is going to be used in plain English. And there was a fascinating study, it was done probably a decade ago, and it was looking at patients' willingness to have their information used either for marketing or for clinical trials. And what they discovered in this research was that um, in general, people are okay if their information is used for clinical trials, whether they explicitly consent to it or not. And they're actually not okay if it's used for marketing back to them, even if they consented to it, which goes to show you people don't even understand the blanket consents they're signing. So it's more of a policy perspective. The gray zone that we've been struggling with is like with COVID, for example, you see lots of people volunteering, not just their data, but physically volunteering to be infected by the, the virus for the benefit of humanity. I think we have a, uh, it is not uh, outside of the realm of human beings to want to participate in making better, uh, making better medicines. What we get into is this gray area of commercial products that um, someone might economically benefit from that isn't necessarily me. And if someone, if a product manufacturer, a digital product manufacturer says, hey, give me all your data and I'm gonna make a product that helps people with diabetes or smoking or, or anxiety or depression or whatever the thing is, or makes your, makes your uh, insurance experience better, you'd go, well, you know, okay, I'm willing to have a conversation, but let me ask you something, what's in it for me? Now, they're, so they're not just turning it over to you unconditionally, they're saying, I'm willing to turn it over to you, but I need something in return for that that value exchange has to be dealt with somehow. So it's not a yes, it's not a no, but it's a gray zone. And I think we're gonna both recognizing it, figuring out the value and then figuring out how to execute the value exchange is, a, is something that we're gonna make progress on in the next few years. And that will help open up more opportunities too.